In this video, we will walk through all the features and updates of the new VRA6. We will explore how to use Kyle Scatter and some of the versatile features it provides. We will also see the new VRA decal with displacement, in addition to the new VRA inmesh, which is a way to create patterns on surfaces. So let's see some of the new features in VRA6, as well as some of the things that were improved upon. The first thing you can notice is that we have a new look for the toolbar. Mainly the icons have changed. Now they look more minimalistic, but also we have new items like the Kyle scatter adding. Additionally, there is a new dedicated menu at the top for easy access to VRA functionalities. Kyle scatter is a powerful system that allows you to control the distribution of things like grass, trees, and much more. You can create a Kyle scatter object from the Kyle scatter toolbar, or you can select it in the create panel. From the top down menu, choose Kyos and click Kyle Scatter. Under Object, you get two options, Distributed On, which is the surface object where you want to distribute your foliage, and Instant Model is the object you want to distribute. You can choose one or multiple objects here. So you select your target surface and the asset you want to instance, and Scatter will do its magic. There is a lot of customization here. For example, the count is the number of instances that are created. You can increase or decrease this number to make your scatter denser or sparser. Also, when dealing with steep geometry, slope limitation is really useful because you can dedicate where your instances are scattered depending on the angle of the surface they are on. The normal versus Z controller allows you to change the orientation of the instance object. This is the case in relation to the surface normal. So a value of 0 would only use the surface normal and a value of 1 would point the instances up straight to the z-axis. This is regardless to the surface normal's orientation, by the way. Another helpful feature is avoid collision, which prevents instances from colliding with one another, and much more settings and parameters to satisfy all the scattering needs. Cosmos is a great place to find assets to scatter, but along with these, you have some scatter presets which you can find under 3D models. After downloading the presets, all you need to do is drag and drop it into your surface. When you think of scattering objects and assets, the first thing that comes to mind is obvious things like rocks, trees, grass, crowds, etc. Things that are inherently random and organic. But you can also use grid scatter to create more grid-like effects, such as brick walls, cobblestone on sidewalks, or any objects with patterns and repetition, like cars or any kind of vehicles, maybe buildings and even decals. Another awesome feature is the ability to use spline to dictate where to and where not to scatter objects, which allows you to easily create things like a dirt path in the grass, and you can do that through the section spline include and exclude under area. Any spline path added to the exclude box will remove all the instances from its path, and vice versa with include. You can use the near and far parameters to add some falloff. You also have the ability to edit instances individually in addition to camera clipping options. And now you have a scatter list that allows you to see all your scattered objects and allows you to select, enable and disable them as well as changing some of their parameters all in one place. You can access the scatter list from the toolbar menu icon. You can also use the spline scatter feature to create things like fence posts, electricity pylons, telephone poles, or anything with regular spacing, as well as animate the instances along said path, so the possibilities are basically endless. We also have randomized materials on scattered objects, which means that you can scatter assets, trees, for instance, you can have randomized colors, and you can control the color shift from one tree to the next. You can also compound the effect and have each leaf on the same tree to have a different color, which is extremely powerful as far as realism is concerned. And you can drive the randomness using multiple methods like noise texture, etc. A new exciting and awesome feature in this version is something called V-Ray InMesh, which is a tool that helps artists create tileable geometry easy and fast. The release note on the Kaios website explains this feature as thinking of geometry like a texture. So rather than repeating an image over a surface, it uses styleable geometry to create a pattern over it. And I have to agree that this tool is ideal for creating things like fences, fabrics, and it promises to use less memory than displacement or copying geometry manually. To use InMesh, similar to the scatter, you need a base object like a plane. 
you also need the object you want to instance. And to use this new feature, you need to go to the modifiers and choose image VRA modifier. Now all you need to do is choose the object you want to repeat. You might notice that nothing has happened, but if you jump to the render view, you can see the pattern created. The modifier offers a lot of parameters to control the instances like tiling, height, rotation, and offset. But you also have crop box size, which is basically the amount of geometry you want to crop from your instanced object, in addition to other things as well. Furthermore, in V-Ray 6, we have now V-Ray decals, which allow you to add displacement to any surface you want, thus achieving even more realistic details. The way you can use this feature is similar to the previous version, only this time, you will be able to use displacement in addition to bump for even more realistic cracked walls, rocks, grounds, and so on. V-Ray decal has a lot of settings. For example, you can control and adjust the projection depth and normal angle, which allows you, depending on your use case, to get rid of stretching along vertical surfaces because the texture is usually projected straight into the surface. You can also extrude objects from the decal by selecting any objects that you want to exclude and then click the exclude button at the bottom. Now in V-Ray 6, you can enhance your visuals by creating procedural clouds in just a few clicks. Add the V-Ray sun to your scene, then you can see a new rollout called cloud. By enabling clouds, this will make your environment a lot more interesting and a lot more realistic instantly. The clouds can even cast shadows on the ground and this addition comes with a lot of adjustable parameters to control the effect, such as density, which controls how dense the clouds are, also variety, which controls how different are the clouds from one another, and putting this to the maximum will ensure that no two clouds have similar shapes. Additionally, you can adjust height, thickness, and you can even add circus clouds. All these parameters can be adjusted in real time, so you can see the result instantly without waiting for it to render. Furthermore, you can adjust the phase and the offset value, and any of these parameters can be animated so you can create a time lapse very easily. Another cool feature is that you can now upload V-Ray renders to the Kyos Cloud, right from within the V-Ray's frame buffer. You can either share it with clients or get feedback from a colleague. To share an image to the cloud, in your frame buffer window, jump to the collaboration tab and you can see a list of all your project's folders, and you can create new ones as well. Now, you just select the folder you want to upload it to and click Upload. Once the upload is finished, open the image outline by clicking the Open in Kyos Cloud button. From there, you can preview the image and the cool thing is, you can leave comments on images. You can also share links with anyone. And you can choose between only viewer and editor, similar to what you can find with Google Drive. Overall, this version of V-Ray came with a lot also minor exciting features such as VRA proxy object hierarchy, which allows you to turn on and off an individual object's visibility or material override. There are also faster UI draw times, and this time around, you can feel that working with shading networks, materials, or textures, which are a lot smoother and they load much faster. There is also enhanced VRA material energy preservation to create even more realistic physically accurate and rough metals and any reflective surface. In addition, there is the new thin film property, which was added to the materials and allows you to easily create realistic soap, bubbles, oil spills, and so on. Overall, V-Ray is becoming much better now with V-Ray version 6, so if you want to check it out and all the features, you will find the necessary links in the description. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.